Thanks so much, David. Um, something a little different, and for those that are new to the story, um, I can give you a brief introduction while the our disclaimer's on the next slide. Uh, but Genetic Signatures uh, is a diagnostic company. We're focused on the better detection of infectious diseases. So the, the reason we do this are infectious diseases are a leading cause of death. They could be bacterial, they could be viral, protozoan, fungal. In fact, we know that uh, antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria uh, it can cause almost 10 deaths every minute uh, around the globe. So better diagnostics ultimately save lives. So we invented a technology, pre-based technology, which does enable the better detection of infectious diseases. So the technology itself dramatically uh, simplifies the detection of these bugs, these pathogens and multiple pathogens from the same patient sample, which is often called multiplex. So we use our technology to make molecular or their PCR-based tests, and these tests identify infectious diseases from clinical samples. We sell these in kit form. It's under the easy screen mark, and we sell them to pathology labs who run our tests. They're ultimately reimbursed by government programs, uh, and the kits are low cost, rapid, and they allow accurate detection of infectious diseases. So the technology um, has been around for a while. We have had strong commercial adoption in Australia, but we know that that's one to 2% of the world market. So we're currently focused on expansion into Europe and into the US, which represent over 70% of the global market. We have four test kits that are cleared for sale. We have more kits coming through the development pathway, and these kits are what generate our revenue. So last financial year was a record for us, 35 million in sales, uh, cash flow positive and profitable. So we're now in a great position, having multiple drivers for growth. Uh, and this includes that expansion into those bigger offshore markets. We have new products coming through to commercial release uh, and we have instrument expansion, which enables us to embed our free-based technology into our customer labs. So that allows them to take on new tests as, as we release them. So we think of our instruments as, as the printer uh, in the printer and cartridge model and our test kits being the ink or the cartridge. So importantly, we've increased our instrument placement by over fourfold in the last uh, two, two to three years. So the next slide is our company snapshot. Um, as said, we have a market cap of around 115 million. Uh, and almost 30% um, of that is in cash. So this may well be the reason for the recent research reports that you can see on the right there uh, with target prices, which are much higher than where we're currently trading. Uh, our, our top shareholders include um, Chris Abbott from Maple Brown Abbott, who was a co-founder of the company. Uh, and we also um, uh, have Fidelity uh, and Perennial uh, as supporters on our, on our register. So the next slide shows our revenue growth for the last four years uh, and the most recent quarter. Um, and you can see that four year um, CAGR of 89%. So the most recent quarter is the last bar there. Remember it's only a quarter, the, the rest are annual. Uh, and that was 16% higher than the, than the preceding quarter. That our last quarter was in context was is higher than the entire FY19 revenue in just the first three months of this financial year. So that correlates uh, with that fourfold increase in instruments uh, that I mentioned earlier. The other, the other points um, I would like to make here is that there is certainly a growing contribution from offshore revenue. Uh, and these include non-COVID kits. So we're actually now in a transition phase shifting from doing COVID only testing, some customers doing only COVID only to full screening, full respiratory panel screening. Uh, and these are the customers that came on over the last few years. So on the next slide, I, I, I would like to briefly describe our three base technology because it is unique to us. We're obviously very proud of it. Uh, and this, this slide hopefully will, will, um, will make sense. What we're seeing there are three sequences from an actual virus, human papilloma virus. And the sequence is just the DNA alphabet, A, C, G, or T. What we know is that the most common mutation in nature in DNA is a C letter changed into a T letter. And in some cases that comprises 50, uh, over 90% of, um, of the mutations that we see. And these are what cause the emergence of variants and, uh, and changes uh, within the organisms. 
So our scientists um, thought if we were able to force that change in all sequences, then we would be much better able to detect variants much more efficiently. So FreeBase was born um, and it's been, um, it's been developed for over 10 years. And you can see in those three sequences here that there are, there's one variant of HPV that has two Cs, the middle variant has no Cs, the bottom variant has only one C. So by us forcing that C to T change, we end up with just one sequence, which allows us to detect all three variants uh, of, of HPV. So you can see that this technology lends itself to detecting multiple organisms in, in one test. Uh, and the next slide will show how we apply that to the syndromic testing field. Because syndromic testing is the future of pathology testing. It just simply refers to the ability of a test to detect multiple organisms from the same clinical samples when, pre when symptoms are present. So we're all familiar with the, the symptoms of respiratory or gastroenteritis. And uh, this syndromic approach allows us to make panels uh, that are relevant to those conditions. So we have developed assays for over 100 organisms, and we can combine them in those clinically relevant um, panels. So, and that allows more information to be reported to the doctors in a, in a very rapid amount of time. So the next slide will just show you what our syndromic panels look like. Um, these are, these are um, panels or kits that we have um, in the market at the moment. Um, the key here is that our revenue was predominantly from those top two products. So that's the respiratory and the gastrointestinal products that, that we produce. Um, but obviously we're very excited because we have many more kits that are coming through that development pathway. So all of these are revenue will be either are or will be revenue generating. So in terms of regulatory approvals, we have four kits with clearances in one or more jurisdictions. Um, and in terms of the US, we've actually identified an unmet need for enteric protozoan testing. And I'd like to tell you a little bit more about that on the next slide. So traditional testing for enteric protozoan, in, it requires skilled labor and a microscope. Um, they need to look down at stool samples that, are, that have been prepared on a slide. It's not very sensitive. Results can take more than a week to report. Um, and the reimbursement levels to the lab are quite low. They're 10 to $20. But these tests persist despite that, as there is no molecular test that has a broad enough coverage to replace that, that traditional test. And so we identified that we can get coverage with about eight molecular targets where others only have three. And this molecular test that we've developed is at the end of the clinical trial process before submission to the FDA. So this test will take hours, it's highly sensitive, it has a reimbursement code already in place of almost 263 US dollars. So our customers, those labs, are able to change from a test that loses money, that takes a long time and is insensitive, to one of ours which is, which is highly sensitive, rapid, and it can become a profit center for those labs. So the next slide summarizes the growth um, initiatives that we're, that, that we are working on. Um, it should be clear, I guess, from what, what I've said so far is that we're really well primed now to leverage our experience in Australia and to grow that, grow that into those international markets that we're targeting. We're already operating in Europe, in the UK, in Germany, in Greece, and, and we, we're focused now on driving adoption of more free based products. The US, I've described that opportunity, and we, that will allow us to build a three base franchise once that protozoan detection kit is cleared. We're focused on building and expanding our easy screen products. They are revenue generating, as I said, uh, and develop those um, kits and get regulatory clearances, which will allow us uh, to sell these freely into multiple markets. So embedding the free base technology is certainly an aim of ours. It's a high value customer. Uh, workflow, they, um, it allows the adoption of our easy screen kits for more applications as we release new products. I did also want to talk just for a, a, a minute on a next generation sample to result instrument. This is, as I said, the instruments are our printer in that model. Uh, and we are actually announced that we are investing heavily into a next generation sample to result instrument. So this just means uh, that um, the technician in the lab can just put a primary sample into a, um, 
into a into our instrument, it will do the three base conversion, purify, amplify, and report results back. So very hands off, uh, and we do think this will be a game changer with our customers. So I'll just wrap up on the next slide, um, which is uh, just our upcoming milestone. So obviously, I've described that US enteric protozoan uh, opportunity. Uh, so filing that application uh, is obviously something that we're working very hard on. Um, we're close, and we expect to file that in the, in the coming months. Um, increasing sales and presence, obviously, in those target markets that we're after. Uh, we're not relying on one US FDA product, we're relying on multiple, and that second one uh, has actually already commenced. We just haven't announced to the market yet what that product is, and obviously continual investment into our technology. So I'm happy to pause there if there are any questions, David. Thanks, John. Great presentation. Um, you know, some people may say, and and serendipity is a great thing, that the, the right place, right time, but... Um, you know, a lot of work went into developing this technology pre-COVID um, and the business was already up and running uh, and commercialising product as, as COVID started to take hold. So um, this is certainly not a COVID uh, story. This was a, a company that had built a technology that was able to, to move quickly when, when COVID and the various screening and and uh, analysis requirements came in. So just to step back a little bit, the work that was done pre-COVID, um, just to talk through that a little bit for, for those who are watching. Yeah, sure, David. It's a, it's, it's a really good question because we're, I think, sometimes uh, just put into that COVID, that COVID camp, um, which um, we've been developing three-base technology for, for well over 10 years. Um, it's a technology that, uh, that we had put into syndromic testing well before the pandemic. So we, we, we had already commercialised um, the gastrointestinal test, so it looks for stomach bugs, um, and the respiratory multiplex screening before the pandemic. And the respiratory kit actually detected the known coronaviruses at that time. So as you suggested, it was quite an easy pivot for us when the new coronavirus came just to change our test slightly in order to specifically pick up that one variant. So we see this now really is going back to our core business. So we have the teams in place in the US, we have teams in place in Europe who are actively promoting selling three based products. And that's what I meant earlier when I said we've got customers who've come on with just COVID only testing who are now transitioning to full respiratory screening. And we've also had customers who have said, what about your enteric test? We'd love to try that because all of our tests work in virtually exactly the same way. And just touching on that, there is a question here about COVID revenue. So a lot of businesses that had um, screening or testing tools for COVID saw a, a significant uplift in revenue, but clearly you've, that, that's not where the revenue sort of rump sits. It's, it's the, that was a great foundation and a, and a great opportunity. But as you say, you know, the question here is, did it open the doors for everything else, which creates the next revenue opportunity? That's, that's, um, that's, that's exactly correct, David. So that, um, it, it really um, was an opportunity for us. We were in a very good position uh, to, to leverage it. We, that's, we quadrupled the instruments we have in the field really on the back of that. And that was primarily overseas uh, in Europe. Um, we also had labs in the US testing for COVID at that time. So it was a great opportunity to get our instruments, our printers out there into customer labs. And that's why now we're transitioning back to what was our core business. So while we may have fewer samples going through, we're looking for more targets in those same samples. So it's higher value per patient sample. So we, we're really in a great position to leverage off that with new products coming through, opening the US market for us. So we, we're very excited. And just talking about the US market, that fran the three base franchise model, how, how does that work in practicality and, and how big is the opportunity? The opportunity um, is, is large. I didn't go through it uh, in, in those 10 minutes, but we've done some modelling with a 263 US-based um, reimbursement that goes to the lab, not to us. Um, you can see that opportunity. The slide said there are five and a half million tests of these done every year in the US. And because it's an unmet need, we've, we've said we're targeting up to 40% of that market. And then we've modelled either $20, $30, $40, $40, which is conservative given the, the rebate. And that translates to between 22 and 88 million US dollars in annual revenue. Um, 
in terms of embedding the three-base technology in that franchise, the second product is already, as I said, starting that their clinical trial for that next product, which will work on the same equipment, which allows the labs to consolidate all the tests that they would like to use on the one platform. So it's really what we're seeing in Australia and Europe, that once that platform's in, we can just feed it with, with any number of tests as quickly as we can get them out and, through, and get regular clearance for them. Thanks, John. Great presentation. A well-developed company with a, a significant opportunity to expand. We look forward to following the, the expansion of the company and its product range into next year and beyond. And uh, all the best for Christmas. You too, David. Thanks so much.